Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a reactive chat application using Spring Boot 2, Project Reactor, and Vaadin. Let's get started. So I'm here on the Vaadin front page. I'm going to click on the Create an App button. And here in the starters, I will select the Project Base with Spring option. I'll leave the group ID as it is. I will give my app the name Vaadin Chat and click on download. This will download a zip file for us that contains a Maven project. We can go ahead and open up this project in our IDE. In my case I'm using IntelliJ but this project would work in any other IDE that works with Maven. So if we take a look at what we have here in the project, we have a POM file here that extends from the Spring Boot uh, starter and includes a Vaadin dependency, Vaadin Spring Boot Starter, and the Spring Boot Dev Tools, which will allow us to refresh the page as we are developing. In addition to these, I will add one more dependency for, uh, for Project Reactor. I'll enable auto import so Maven can pull down those dependencies for us. Now, if we look into the source folder, we'll see that we have three files in here. We have the Spring Boot application. We have a main view, which is a vertical layout that is mapped to the empty route, so that's just to the context route. And then we have this message bean, which is a spring service. We can start by just removing everything that we have in here. We won't be needing that. Remove the auto wiring here and delete the bean. Instead of that, we will add in a H1 just to make sure that this works. So we'll add a new H1 say hello world. We'll save this and run the application. In this case uh, IntelliJ has picked up that this is a Spring Boot application and it's running this main method in here. If your ID doesn't do that just uh, be sure to run this application. This should start a server on localhost 8080 so we can go there and we should be able to see hello world here. I have uh, this live reload plugin here, and that works together with Spring Boot DevTools and will reload the browser every time we make a change here, which will make it a little bit easier for us to see our, see our progress. The app that we're going to build is a chat application, like I said. It'll look something like this. So we have a header, we have an input at the bottom, and of course we want to be able to connect multiple clients and chat with each other. All right, so let's get started with the coding. In the main view, first thing that I'm going to do is I will configure it to be full size. That means that we, the layout will reach all the way to the bottom here of the browser window. That way we will be able to put the input field at the bottom there. So we'll set the size to full. I will also set the default uh, horizontal alignment to center. That way everything gets centered in it. And then we can go ahead and add a header, which was bot in chat. So we'll create a new h1 bot in chat. Call this header. For the header, we are going to use the theming API in Vaadin, and we're going to add the dark theme variant to it. That way, we'll flip the flip the colors of it and get the look and feel that we had in our in our spec earlier. We'll add this to the main layout, which is this vertical layout. So we'll add the header to it and build the project, which should hopefully update the browser and we should see the result. All right, so we can see we have the H1 here. The colors are inverted and it's centered, so all of this worked. Now, at this point, I want to add a CSS style sheet for us to be able to customize the look and feel of this a little bit. So in the front end folder in styles, I will create a new folder, or sorry, a new file, styles.css. Here I will create a uh, main view selector, or rather a main view h1 selector. And for the h1, I want to first of all put the margins to zero. I want to add a padding to it. 16 pixels is good. And then set the width with to 
save that. Then we need to go into our main view here and give it a class name so that that matches. So we'll call add class name, give it the main view class name that we used in our CSS. And then we will add a style sheet annotation here where we call or where we load that. So the path will be frontend slash slash styles slash styles dot CSS. So the same path is here, frontend styles styles CSS. Save it, build, wait for it to reload, and now it matches the look and feel that we had in our example before. All right, so with that taken care of, the next thing that we want to do is ask for the username so we know who is coming into our chat. We'll split that into a method of its own. So we'll ask username. We'll extract this to a new method. Here, what we want to do is we want to have a text field for the username and a button next to each other. Since we are currently in a vertical layout, we can't just put both of these components into the vertical layout, otherwise they would be stacked on top of each other. So instead, what we want to do is create a new horizontal layout that we can use to wrap them. In here, we create a new text field for the username. And then we create a new button for start the chat. Call it start button. Then we take the layout and add both of those components to it. Username field, start button, and then finally we add to the main vertical layout just this one horizontal layout. Okay, I'll build this again, make sure that we're on the right track. Yep, you can see we have a text field here and a button. The next thing we want to do is add some interactivity. So we want to take the start button and add a click listener to it. That way we can react to somebody clicking on it. So when somebody clicks on it, the thing that we want to do is first of all, figure out what the username is. So what the value of the username field is. So we'll get the value from it. We'll put this into a field called username. That way uh, we have access to it later on. Once we have the username safely stored away, what we can do is remove this uh, layout because we don't need it anymore. And instead, we can call show chat, which will then build the rest of the UI. So again, we'll build this and make sure that everything's working this far. All right, I'll refresh here and put in something, hit start chat. And what happens is that that UI disappears. So essentially, we got the value, we stored that away, then we called remove layout, which caused it to disappear. And then we called show chat, which currently doesn't do anything at all. All right. So the next thing we want to do here inside the show chat method is create a new component of our own. We'll call it message list. Like that, we'll go ahead and implement this. Message list will be a component that extends from just the HTML div element. So we'll uh, select the div element from Comvod and Flow. And here, I want to do two things. First of all, in the constructor, we'll give this a class name. So we'll add class name message list. The reason I'm doing that is I want this uh, message list to be scrollable so that we can show uh, messages, uh, kind of more messages than we can fit into the screen. So message list overflow y should be scroll. And then inside of this later on, we will add some paragraph tags for the messages. So what I'll do here is just set the width of them it's hard to type with to a hundred percent. We'll do the same for the message list itself. All right, so we'll go into the message list. The second part of the message list component is overriding the add method on div. We essentially want it to do the default behavior. So we want to call super.add 
with the components. So just add the components regularly. But what we want to override here is we want to uh, have the last added message to be scrolled into view. The way we can do that is by taking the components that were just added, find the last one. So we'll components at length minus one. We call get element on that, which will give us the underlying DOM element essentially. And then we can call a function on it. So calling a function is essentially calling a JavaScript function on this um, on this element. The one that we want to call is scroll into view. So that way it'll get scrolled into view. So now we have our own custom component that is a div that knows how to scroll the last added uh, message into view. With that we'll add both the message list and create an input layout. Again, use the, use the ID here to create the method. For the input layout, it's going to be on the bottom here, will be very similar to the username here. So we need to have a horizontal layout that can keep the text field and the button next to each other. So we'll create the new horizontal layout, call layout again, and then we'll return this layout to make the compiler happy. Inside of this layout, we will add two things, the text field, first of all. Text field, there we go. This will be the message field. Then we'll add a button for sending, call it send button. We'll add these to the layout, like that. Press save, build again, and make sure that we're on the right track. So right now, what we should see is that we have all the components in place, but they're not really where we want it to be. In order to move this all the way to the bottom here and make sure that's kind of all the, the width of the entire screen, we need to uh, do two things. We'll use the expand API to tell the layout which component we want to get all the extra space in the layout. So in this first case, we want to call expand on message list that will make message list as big as it can be while still uh, leaving space for the input layout. For the input layout, we want to set the width of it to 100%, so it's the width of the whole screen. And then on this horizontal layout, we want to use this expand API again, so layout.expand, in this case for the message field. The last little tweak here is the button in our example was blue, and we can accomplish that again with the uh, theme variants that Vaughn ships with, so we'll take the button variants and we can select the primary variant from there, and that should make it nice and blue and kind of apparent for people that they should be clicking on it. All right, so we'll build this again and see if it works. We'll start the chat, and we can see that we have this input here, we have the send button, and everything looks okay. All right, so right now we are essentially as far as we can go with the UI before we implement some things in the back end to actually handle these messages. So to do that, I will go into the application class here and configure two beans. The first one will be a unicast processor for chat messages. So that's gonna be the data model. And obviously for that to work, we need to have a chat message object uh, my chat message object is just a plain Java object with a string for the username that sent it, a timestamp, and the message that got sent. All right, so we'll have the unicast processor of chat messages. We'll call this the publisher. In here, we'll return a unicast processor dot create, so that we'll create a new unicast processor which will be the central place to which all the chat 
clients will send their messages and it will then make sure that those get published out to everyone else. Uh, the problem with a unicast processor is that only one client can be connected to it at a time. So what we want to do is create a flux that we can use to kind of pipe uh, between that unicast processor and all the chat clients. So we'll create a flux of chat messages again. We'll call this messages. We'll auto wire in the unicast processor from before. So chat messages, we'll call it. We'll call it publisher. And here what we return is the publisher and then we call replay 30 so we want to replay a little bit of history for anyone who joins our chat later and then auto connect which will tell this to defer the uh, kind of creation of all of this until somebody actually uh, comes in and uh, starts listening for messages so the way this works is that all the connected chat clients will publish their messages to this publisher this flux will uh, get notified of them and then all the clients can be connected to this uh, flux and get notified whenever uh, a new message comes in. So we'll go into the main view and we will auto wire in both of those things. So we'll take the unicast processor of chat messages, call it publisher here as well. And then we have the flux of chat messages called messages. We can use the IDE here to bind these to fields so that we have access to them in our code. And with those implemented, we're able to go in here to our input layout and add a click listener to add a click listener to our button and actually send the message. So when we send a message, essentially what we want to do is get the message from the message field send this to the publisher and then clear out the field uh, so that we can enter the next message. So we'll get the publisher, call on next, create a new chat message. This takes in the username and the message. The username we saved in that uh, field earlier and the message we can get from the message fields get value. Once we've sent that away, we can call message field clear to clear it out and message field focus to move the focus back in there. You can also make the message field focused from the beginning, which would be a little bit nicer in terms of UX. All right, at this point, I will need to stop and rerun the application because we did some spring configuration changes and typically Spring Boot DevTools isn't very good at picking those up. So we'll wait for this to start up again. There we go. I'll Minimize that and refresh. And hopefully, if we go in here now, send a message, what we'll see is that the input field got cleared and the focus moved right back into it. Now, of course, we still don't see the messages anywhere because we're not listening on that flux. Uh, so we're not getting notified of any new messages and we're not adding them anywhere. To do that, we'll go into our show chat me method here. and for the messages, we'll subscribe. This will get called anytime a message comes in. And what we want to do when a message comes in is create a new paragraph for the message and add it to this message list. So message list.add. This is the overridden add method that we created. And in here, we'll add a new paragraph. For the paragraph, I'll get the messages from information, then I'll add a separator, and then I will add the message itself, like that. All right, so we'll build this again, see that it works. Start chatting, type in something, and you can see that it shows up here. So that's pretty cool. We have a semi-working chat at least. What I'll do then is open up another window so that we can have somebody to chat with. We'll copy the URL, go to the same place, start chatting, demo two. And uh, 
let's try to type in something. Hello? All right, so this doesn't work for two reasons. The first of them being that Vaadin by default uses XHR requests for communication. So when we're sending a message from this other chat client uh, to the server, this other browser will never get notified. The other thing that causes an error here is that uh, Vaadin by default doesn't let external threads update the UI unless we specifically tell it that we know what we're doing. So in this case, the second window is causing a new message to get uh, sent, and this code will get run in the first chat windows code. And this is essentially coming from a separate thread, so we need to take care of some, some locking. So in order to handle the synchronization properly, we need to use an access method on the UI of a Vaadin application. The UI is essentially the central part of a Vaadin application, the browser window, if you will. We can get a hold of it by calling get UI. And that's an optional, so we check if it's present. If it is, we can call access on it and pass in a command. And this command will be our kind of UI modifying code here. So we'll take the message list.add code, we'll put it in here and format the code for a little bit better readability. So that takes care of the synchronization. The other part that we need to take care of is making sure that the messages can get sent out all, to all the clients uh, at the same time. We can do that using WebSockets in Vaadin. The way we use a WebSocket is by uh, adding the at push annotation to our application. What that does is when a client comes into the application, Vaadin will make sure that that client gets moved over to a WebSocket. If it supports that, if it doesn't support WebSockets, it will try to go through a list of fallback protocols to make sure that the end user still gets the same, same kind of experience. Okay, so hopefully our application should work now. See, we'll put our two chat windows up here next to each other. We'll log in as demo and demo2. Type in something here. Hello. And now you can see that it gets updated in both windows instantaneously. Hello indeed. All right, so that is it. Uh, you can check the text version of this tutorial for all the code snippets and for a link to the GitHub. And I hope you learned something and enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.